This week marks the three-year anniversary of the deadly Florida Pulse nightclub shooting that claimed 49 lives and became the deadliest attack on the gay community in U.S. history. Here in Florida, Republican Governor Ron DeSantis initially failed to mention the LGBT community in a proclamation marking the anniversary. Once called out repeatedly and publicly for the, admit, the omission, DeSantis's office scrambled to release a new statement, including this line, quote, the state of Florida will not tolerate hatred toward the LGBTQ and Hispanic communities. The office blamed an unnamed staffer for the original omission. And joining me now is Florida State Representative Anna Escamani, whose district includes the site of the Pulse nightclub, and Brandon Wolf, Pulse nightclub shooting survivor. Thank you both for being here. And Representative Escamani, I want to read your tweet um, that you tweeted to Governor DeSantis, and you wrote, Governor DeSantis has stripped any mention of the LGBT community in remembering Pulse. This is completely straightwashed and an insult to HD 47, uh, which is your district. Um, based on these side-by-side -side Pulse proclamations, Governor Rick Scott was a better friend to LGBTQ Floridians than DeSantis, and the old statement did mention the LGBT community. I want to um, just note that the old proclamation said, whereas the entire state of Florida has come together to stand uh, boldly with Orlando and the central Florida community against terrorism, um, the new one said the state of Florida will not tolerate hatred toward the LGBTQ and Hispanic communities, and we will stand boldly with Orlando and the central Florida community against terrorism and hate. That's the old versus the new statement. Uh, the governor blamed a staffer for stripping out for the original statement, um, not including the LGBT community. What do you, as a member of the Florida state government, make of the sort of kerfuffle? Well, thank you so much for having me, Joy. I mean, my first reaction was I'm glad they made the correction. Um, whether they're taking full responsibility or shifting blame to a staffer, the fact that they actually knew that this was a poor decision on their part and they needed to correct it immediately um, was something that left me uh, pleased, but with another ask for real policy change. Words are important, but action is much more important. And what kind of policy changes would you like to see? Well, we've been asking for years now uh, for our state to not only pass an executive order that would grant protections for LGBTQ plus workers who are state workers, but to also pass the Competitive Workforce Act, which would ban discrimination from being gay in the state of Florida. Right now, we still do not have those protections. And, you know, Brandon, as a survivor of Pulse, I, I understand that you did get a chance to um, speak with the governor at the, um, uh, the memorial for the Pulse uh, victims yesterday. Do you, could you mind telling us about that? Yeah, it was a, it was a big deal. Um, obviously, that day was really difficult for me. Um, it was difficult for a lot of people. And so to be there on that site uh, in that moment was challenging. It was emotional. But um, after he had finished his tour with Barbara Poma, the owner of Pulse, he turned and, and we had a brief conversation. I shared with him how much it means to the LGBTQ community of Florida to see a governor that is willing to pay respects, that's willing to show up to the site, uh, and that's willing to open a dialogue. But I also told him you know, that, that we've had three years of not being heard, that this is a community who's been in pain, it's a community who has suffered, and it's a community that's ready to have a different kind of relationship with a new governor. Um, I really hope that that is the beginning of this relationship. I hope that this is just the beginning of a dialogue. He acknowledged to me that we have a lot of work to do, but he also promised me that he would do everything he could to get it done. Um, right now, I'm taking that as an olive branch. It's goodwill, and I'm, I'm looking forward to further dialogues with him about how we can treat LGBTQ people as people in Florida. And, you know, Brandon, you are an advocate in so many ways, um, not only on LGBTQ issues, but also on issues of gun violence. This was a, a tragedy that, it, it, you know, an, an attack, a terrorist attack that combined the two. What kind of concrete policy solutions would you like to see? Uh, what would you like to see change legislatively in Florida on those both of those fronts? Yeah, a lot needs to change. Uh, you know, to echo what Representative Escamani said, the Florida Competitive Workforce Act is an absolute must pass. In this state today, 30% uh, of Floridians still, because there are no protections for them, could be fired because they married a same-sex partner. They could be denied housing because their boyfriend or girlfriend might come over and have dinner with them. Um, that's totally unacceptable in 2019. So on the LGBTQ front, that needs to change. We need to pass comprehensive non-discrimination policy in Florida. And in terms of gun violence, we need to have a real conversation um, about universal criminal background checks. We need to have a real conversation about red flag laws that would allow law enforcement um, to temporarily remove firearms from those who may be a harm to themselves or others. There are real issues where we can coalesce around. 
it's hard to forget, it's hard to remember sometimes that a majority of Floridians actually support most common sense gun safety measures. Uh, you've seen, I know, ban assault weapons now is looking to put an assault weapons ban uh, on the ballot as a constitutional amendment in front of voters, and a majority of people in Florida support that. So I think as soon as we start having those conversations, we'll realize that a majority of us are on board with common sense gun safety reform. Yeah. All right. I'm going to put both of you on the uh, debate stage panel. I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to use my magical TV uh, abilities. It's just you guys are, are going to get to ask a question. And uh, I'm going to start with you, uh, Representative Eskamani. You get to ask any question you want at that debate. What question do you want to hear asked? What question would you ask? I want to hear a conversation about access to abortion, to a safe and legal abortion. I've been very disappointed in um, some of the wishy-washy responses from presidential candidates around this issue. And here in the state of Florida, we were the one state in the Southeast that did not pass any type of politically motivated restriction on a safe and legal abortion. And I want to see our presidential candidates be bold about the importance of reproductive justice in their platform. Okay. All right, Brandon, you're on that debate stage. What would you want to have asked? Well, not surprisingly, I want to know what are these candidates going to do to protect LGBTQ folks, not just in Florida, but across the country. Um, this, the Trump administration happily, as I told you last week, sells their tacky t-shirts, LGBT for Trump, and parades itself as pro-LGBT, but the reality is they've been an unmitigated and embarrassing disaster, specifically for the transgender community. So I'd like to hear every one of those candidates put forth real policy efforts that will protect transgender Americans, that will uh, reverse some of the horrific things like the military ban and the rollback of the equal access rule, uh, and will really treat LGBTQ people as the American citizens they are. Yeah, okay. Well, um, I think those would be great questions to ask. So hopefully uh, all the NBC heads were listening. Um, Representative, we know Trump is, is kicking off his 2020 uh, re-elect in Orlando. Uh, I'm not sure. Is that, that might be in your, might be in your district. Uh, what, what would you, if you had, a, if you had the, the president one-on-one, -on -one, what would you want to ask him or tell him? It is actually right outside of our district, and uh, we are going to be at the counter rally taking place right outside this rally point to demonstrate how the values of Central Florida are the antithesis of the values of President Donald Trump. Uh, if I had a chance to talk to him, I would stress how offensive he's been towards the lives of people who are different from him, and whether it is women, those with disabilities, immigrants. Myself, I identify as Iranian American. My pa my parents came to this country in search of the American dream, and I do feel like as immigrants, we are very isolated under the Trump administration. And so I would bring those issues forward and ask him for a clear response on why why does he divide us as a part of his political platform. Yeah, and, and Brandon, you know, I, I always love talking to you, but I, I'm going to ask you the same question that I asked Mariana Atencio um, in the last block. And you can also feel free to, to say what you'd say to Donald Trump as well. But I asked Mariana, um, what does she say to, she's, a, you know, she's an influencer, both in, in terms of her news work on social media, on all kinds of media. And when she's talking to fellow immigrants, you know, fellow brown girls, like, what does she say to them when they say, what is this America? I don't recognize it. Where do I fit into it now? The LGBT community, and as you mentioned rightly, the trans community in particular, has got to be feeling pretty vulnerable right now. So when you're talking to members of um, the LGBT community, the uh, LGBT community of color, uh, of which you're a member of the trans community, what, what do you say to them about what is this moment? What does it mean? And, and, and are people expressing to you that they are afraid in this moment? Yeah, of course they are. And they have every right to be afraid. But, you know, what I tell them is um, there are a lot more people that are allies than there are enemies in this fight. Mm -hmm. If you look around and you just ask people in this country where we're at, a majority of people believe that the country is ready for an openly gay president. A majority of people believe that LGBTQ folks should be protected under civil rights law. A majority of people believe that transgender Americans deserve exactly the same rights as everyone else. So, yes, the silent mi or the loud minority is 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 loud um, but there are a lot more allies than there are enemies in this fight yeah it'd be nice if a majority of people voted <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> right. I, that's I the mean, next goal, like, Joy. That's what we're working on. <laughs> for more than 60% in a presidential election, I should put it that way. It's about 60%. Yeah. We can do better. Uh, Representative can. Anna Escavani, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for being here. Brandon Wolf, friend of the show, thank you very much. Really appreciate uh, both thank of you. your time. Thank you. Thank and coming you. up at the top, thank you. Coming at the top of the hour, the latest on rising tensions between the U.S. and Iran. And up next... Friend of the show. We're having lots of friends on today. Dean Obadala is going to come back. He's going to, uh, he took on a group of neo-Nazis. Get this. Took on a group of neo-Nazis. Soundly defeated them. He's going to tell us about that next.